Waternish, it's, it's a crofting community in the Isle of Skye. There's two key, key places on the Isle of Skye that we still have corn crates coming to every year, and that Waternish is one of them, Trotternish is the other one, so they're really important for corn crates. There's a tiny, tiny population, but we still have a resident population, so everything, we are, we are here basically to support crofters to keep this habitat available to corn crates. Ultimately, corn crakes like well-kept agricultural land, and so the more we can improve the grassland, the more the corn crates will like it. Where the crofter is perhaps not able to do the work anymore, he or she comes into a land management agreement with us, and we manage the croft if it, we are managing it for corn crakes, but ultimately it's doing what crofters would do. that we have either corncrake adults or corncrake chicks in here. There have been male corncrakes calling in this area, so we don't, we never know if they've bred, if they've produced a brood or not, but if they have, this is the kind of place that they're going to be running around in. Corncrate friendly mowing is a method whereby you can cut the grass while keeping the corncrate safe, basically. A traditional mowing would start on the outside of the field and basically cut inwards, inwards, inwards until every, there's the only bit of long grass left of it is right in the middle and that's where the corncrates would have congregated. And then you mow that down and either the congregate, the, the corncrates would get mown down or they would have to cross open ground where they're open to predation. The concrete friendly mowing starts in the middle of the field and basically works out. So it pushes, the concretes can stay in the long grass, which is where they want to be, but the mowing basically pushes them to the field edges, the safety of the field edges. So there's no point that they'll get mowed. Catherine Matheson. I live in Waternish on the Isle of Skye. Um, I was born and brought up on a farm, which is locally. I'm now uh, involved in crofting with my family here in Waternish. But this is people who love the land, who want to work the land, um, probably brought up doing that. You know, it's, a, it's very much a generational thing. Have you ever seen a corn crake? I have never seen a corn crake, but I have heard a corn crake. And what's it like to have them on your pack? It's amazing. It's amazing. It's it's such a well, it's such a unique sound that they make. But also, you know, when you find out more about them, um, that journey that they make from Africa to here, you know, just for such a sort short period of time, then it is incredibly amazing and really interesting. But for the corn creek, the fact that you can actually help provide them a habitat here um, is, yeah, really important. I grew up on a farm, so it's in my blood. And I have great joy in passing it down to my children. And they do already, at a young age, are really interested in farming, but also 
they're becoming more aware that the world is a fragile place when it comes to nature. We're helping set up the next generation of farmers and crofters. Yeah, Crofters are, I mean, I, I just really like them. They're very friendly, they're very down to earth, and I learn a huge amount from them. Everything I know about this job I've learned from crofters, really. So. I think what they've done is provide a haven for corncrakes here. That one thing we know about Waternish is that the corncrakes are never mowing down here because they do delay, they delay their mowing and they cut corncrake friendly. Everybody in Waternish does that. And we're very lucky to have that skill set here and the, well, the enthusiasm as well to do it. today the concrete friendly mowing is taking him a lot more time than it would be if he did it traditional ways and so this is where the, the grant schemes and the subsidies kind of compensate for that but it only just compensates for it. it's not like they make a profit out of doing it so yeah it's it yeah it's it's an expensive thing to do it nature friendly wise it costs more it takes more time it takes more diesel you know it takes more effort and skill you know, that's a skill, but Ian's doing the field there is a really skilled thing. Imagine this support wasn't there, what do you think would happen? I think most people wouldn't, wouldn't then purposely leave areas for wildlife, for the corn creeks. So the support is crucial? Yes, yes. They have the ability to manage the countryside in a way that, you know, lots of things thrive, I suppose. That's, that's what crofting is, isn't it? It's, it's a kind of marriage of agriculture and nature and wildlife and people live in it. Nature and farming go really well together. Farming with some very minor tweaks can be really, well, it is really in fa fantastic for nature. Corn crates wouldn't survive without farming. So it's just some tiny little tweaks, such as delaying the mowing, cutting corn friendly, can make it work for everybody. 